So, without further ado, I am going to welcome Joe Twist, Dr. Joe Twist, OBE. Um, what I need from all of you is a very sort of long and protracted round of applause as they move away these items. So whooping, cheering. Jo is absolutely brilliant. Anyone who's had any contact with her will know that. She's a fantastic advocate for our industry. Um, and um, so there's gesturing happening. Um, and her talk today is going to be talking about the market data that has just been released this morning. And I'll let Jo come and talk about that. So whoop and cheer. Almost there, almost there. Keep it going. Keep it going. Let's just give a round of applause again for the molecules and that fantastic performance. That was brilliant. Absolute mind blowing. Well, welcome everybody uh, to this opening summit of this year's fabulous London Games Festival, the fourth edition. This is brilliant. Another round of applause if you're not already. Um, you may or may not know, so Michael French and the team did a brilliant job, um, and this is the fourth time we've been doing this, uh, of putting on this fantastic festival, celebrating all things games, all things cultural, the people within it, uh, and the impact that we have, which is why we're here um, this morning for this summit. Um, the festival is an initiative uh, between, in partnership with Yuki, and, and we're Yuki, the trade body uh, that represents games, um, and Film London, which is the London's uh, film agency. And it's all funded and supported by the Mayor of London and his cultural team, which is really important because the Mayor recognises how important and what an impact uh, what we do has on culture. So I'm uh, really pleased and especially pleased. My first slide's missing, guys. <laughs> yeah, my first slide's gone. It's gone. Oh, I don't know where it's gone. It was a big love heart, uh, but it's gone. Has it been deleted? Doesn't matter. It was a big love heart. And then I just went straight to the uh, surprise figures. Uh, never mind. It was a big love heart. Imagine a big love heart there. Um, I am especially pleased to be uh, opening. I'm not going to say very much because um, we've got a, a wealth of fantastic speakers who are far more qualified and have far more interesting things to say um, than me. And of course, over the next few days, and in fact, the next 12 days, there's going to be so much for you um, to do and to see uh, the impact yourselves, uh, if you don't know already, um, of what our wonderful art uh, does. And you're going to hear um, lots of stories, lots of discussion, lots of evidence about the kinds of impact uh, games and our sector, our industry, our art um, can have in so many different ways uh, across so many parts of our human lives. It has been a fantastic year, um, 2018, uh, for people who love what our industry produces, makes, does. That's the slides. Uh, this morning, hot off the press, uh, and thank you to Luke on my team here in the front row. Uh, we released the 2018 uh, annual um, consumer valuation, um, something that we do every year, because it's not just about showing how much people actually buy games uh, and spend their, their, their hard-earned cash uh, on games, but actually how much they spend around the halo of games. And that halo is what we call the kind of games culture. Um, and that's an important thing to capture, because games are not just about uh, money, they're not just about buying games, it is about um, enjoying uh, what we love as part of being human. So whether that be through uh, paying to come to events like this, um, and events that bring people together through passion like esports, uh, or through merchandise that people want to wear with pride, or to buying the soundtracks, that precious vinyl uh, in many cases, to some of the incredibly magical games um, that people uh, in this country and, and elsewhere make. Um, it's all part of this economic and cultural impact that we have. And I think we like to call it the kind of cultural economy, not just the economy. So people uh, in the UK, so this is only people in the UK, but it, it could be games made from wherever, uh, spent 5.7 billion pounds on all of this love and all of this stuff 
uh, that we make as an industry. And that is up 10% from, from 2017. And that is pretty damn bloody good. Uh, and I am very, very proud um, that we're able to bring you these figures um, hot off the press today. It is important, though, to understand uh, the context of these numbers. Um, people don't just spend on games. It is about their hobby. It is about something that is a legitimate part of our passion uh, as humans. When we spend on events, it is about that human need to be together, to share our passion as a community, just like it is with a traditional sport, or it is with a music gig, or it is to go to the cinema together, to share in that passion, that story. We wear our love of games. I wear my love of games in my GDC shop earrings, which I've had many comments on uh, th this past couple of days. I buy these because I want to wear my, my culture. I want to wear what I'm into. I want to wear what I wear, what I buy, also signifies the kind of person I am. It's part of my identity. And I think we are also sharing in a culture that crosses over so many differences uh, in ways that I don't think lots of other media do. The second most hated question I get uh, as a woman in games, uh, after the what's it like being a woman in games that Siobhan also hates, um, is what's your favorite game? Because it's a weird, weird question to me. Uh, I, it depends what mood I'm in. It depends what mood I want to be in. Uh, if I'm feeling a bit sad, if I'm feeling angry, if I'm feeling stressed out, it really depends. I have lots of favorites. But no matter who you are and what mood you're in, there is a game for you out there that is probably made and is going to be on show over the next 12 days. I'm very proud to also have another hat, which is to be the chair of BAFTA Games um, as of last summer. And in 2018, I think the BAFTA Awards did an absolutely brilliant thing, which lots of other awards do, but there is none like BAFTA. It is our global Oscars. Uh, we introduced a new category called Game Beyond Entertainment. And some of us kind of were like, well, do we need this? Because surely all games can go beyond entertainment. It's not just about having fun, and having fun is important. Um, but I think what it really meant was that we were able to shine this fantastic spotlight on games that do go beyond just having fun or beyond entertainment that, that, that perhaps have a different kind of uh, message or a different kind of uh, theme. And I think that BAFTA is a charity and is a really, really trusted brand globally. I think BAFTA, even recognizing games as it has done for, the, for over 20, 20 years, um, really, really is important in signifying the impact that games have fundamentally uh, on society. Uh, and, I, and I think we're gonna, we, well, I hope we're gonna hear more of that um, later on today. And in fact, if you go downstairs, um, BAFTA have a little section that they'll be running over the next couple of days. Um, please write your post-it of, of my life in games, um, because it's important that we shout loudly about how important this is to us. Because if you do only read the Daily Mail or the Telegraph sometimes, or uh, some of the mainstream press, you'd be forgiven uh, for thinking that games are bloody dangerous, aren't they? Don't touch them, they're really dangerous. And I, I agree, actually. I agree games are dangerous. Games are dangerous because they are the most important form of art and way of expressing ourselves for the 21st century and they are totally undervalued in cultural ways. They are dangerous because they challenge some of our preconceptions. You know, if I get demonized for spending eight hours in dreams creating a musical masterpiece uh, that I then win some music award for, um, is that dangerous? Maybe I need a little bit more balance and I will take regular grip breaks and uh, exercise more. But we, as a games industry, recognize that some people just don't understand us. Some people just understand or don't even understand our business models. They think we must be doing something evil if we're making money out of free things, uh, forgetting that humans are motivated by different ways and they like to pay or they like to give back and they like to enjoy things. But our industry does take our responsibility to our players really seriously because we want everyone to enjoy what we do as much as we do enjoy it. And that is important, and it is going to be even more important uh, as we go through the next, 20, the next years of the 21st century. 
Because I think that games are a really important cultural tipping point. This is our Elvis Presley moment. That is Elvis, not Leon, uh, one of my team members who looks uncannily like him. Um, Elvis Presley, as many of you uh, will know, uh, when he first appeared on telly, he wasn't allowed to be shown, uh, he was only allowed to be shown from the waist up because of those evil hips, dangerous hips. So I think this is our cultural tipping point. I think we are dangerous because we are challenging, we are disruptive, and because we are the most powerful form of expression for a 21st century that is going to be characterized by uncertainty. Uh, Eric Zimmerman is one of my favorite um, games person, uh, and I love his uh, manifesto for a ludic century. Uh, and he says that like making music, telling stories and creating images, playing games is what it is part of what it means to be human. We all know this uh, in the room. I think wider society is beginning to recognize that. Because what we know about games is that they do provide a critical literacy, whether you're making them or playing them. You are learning about systems, you are learning about living in an algorithmic society, you are learning critical thinking, you're practicing for life. You are practicing life, and you're practicing it in a, in a safe way. So games are a critical part of what I believe is going to be a critical way of being for the 21st century. So I, for one, cannot wait to hear what these fantastic speakers have to say. There might be some controversy. Uh, you may not agree with everything, but that's what all good art means. So I look forward to the rest of the session. I look forward to the next 12 days. Um, I will be bedraggled by the end of it, but not so bedraggled as the Games London team. And I want to congratulate them, uh, and led by Michael, uh, again, for putting on such a wonderful show. So let the games begin. Thank you very much.